Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Janine McGowan, and I design cross stitch as the blue flower. It's lovely to see you. It's been three weeks since the last video because after Expo, I was just worn out. <laughs> so I tried to take a page from Rye's book and go ahead and get some rest. But I do want to thank everyone who participated in Expo by exhibiting, by attending, by ordering, all of it. So thank you all for making it such a fun event. It was really delightful to get to talk to other designers and shop owners and to know that the designs are going out to new homes to be stitched up. So thank you all. I hope you're all very patient too with your shop owners since they've had to collect all of the shipments and put them into individual orders and ship them out so they're still working as hard as can be. Thank you, everyone. Lots of fun new designs. So much great stuff to see. I have a few orders headed my way, so I'm sure they'll be featuring in upcoming videos. Starting off with Stitching in Action, this one is especially fun. This is Baking Squirrel, stitched by Tanya. This was a freebie in the Market Cookbook, I think, two years ago. And she's changed the colors, which of course I approve of. Got a little drunk with power, Tanya. I like it. She used a variegated DMC blue for the apron and used a DMC etoile for the steam coming out of the top of the pie. But I think my favorite thing is that she stitched it on 18 count perforated paper and then put a magnet on the back and stitched just white into the background so the magnet doesn't show. So now she can just pop it up on her fridge. What a great idea. As always, if you have a blue flower design that you've stitched, go ahead and send it to me. I'd love to talk about it and show it on the website. And if you just want to browse and be inspired by other stitchers, the website has a stitching in action page with lots of great ideas. So thank you so much, Tanya, for sharing that. I can see myself stitching some motifs on perforated paper and making little fridge magnets as well. What a great idea. What I'm stitching. Ha ha. Ha ha. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm continuing to work on the Pilsner Memorial Sampler, Marianne Witt Mitten from Mary Wind Farm. And I'll go ahead and put a photo in because it's so big it's hard to show. But I have finished the border. I've finished the Pilsners up at the top. I am almost finished with the little motifs over the house here. I'm sorry, I should stay on this side. So I've got a few more things to put in there. And then I need to put the two birds in at the top and fill in this and I'm done which means I should have it finished by the time I go to Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit in two weeks and I can put it on the brag table I've never had anything on the brag table partly because I usually fly to events so it's harder to bring especially something big so this time I'm driving and also it seems appropriate Pilsner were he here would absolutely love to sit in one place and be admired. So fingers crossed, I should be able to have the Pilsner Memorial Sampler at the brag table with everyone else's lovely things. And it'll be almost like showing off Pilsner a little bit. All right, Stash Spotlight. It's a little unusual this time. It's a book, a big, heavy book. This book is called Mariposas Nocturnus and the photographer Emmett Gowan takes pictures of live moths in Central and South America and they're just stunning. It is a big heavy book um, but it has beautiful photographs and I've highlighted some of my favorites here which I will show. Let's see. Oops. This one here, let's see if you can see those feet, those fuzzy fuzzy feet. Look at those, that's amazing. This next one, I really love. I, I think it looks it's like, a, like a night sky. It's just stunning. And there are so many beautifuls. There's two more here that I particularly love. First, this one here, this beautiful jewel green with almost like, it's almost like superhero lightning bolts on it. And then this one here, which the wings are so amazing. But I have to say, I find often when I'm looking for ideas for designs or thinking about colors for designs, I will get out a book like this and just look and really be inspired by the beautiful photographs and the amazing, amazing moths that are in this book. 
it is as i said a big heavy book so if you don't necessarily want to keep something like that on your <laughs> shelf all the time you might check your local library they often can get something like that even if they don't have it in stock and then you can still have all the fun of flipping through and looking at the beautiful photographs and being inspired by the amazing natural world so that's my stash spotlight today world around also sort of includes a moth we have tobacco hornworms that have moved into our garden and are eating our tomatoes and these are very large very large caterpillars up to six inches and then it was a little shocking the first time i saw one so i took a picture and i went inside to show robert and see if he knew what it was and look it up and by the time we got back out and realized we shouldn't let it continue eating our tomatoes we couldn't find it so <laughs> it's been lurking in the tomato plants ever since and just when i think oh maybe it's been a nice meal for a bird nope more chewed up tomatoes so they're like i said a very large caterpillar which produces a very large moth but Tomato hornworms and tobacco hornworms, very similar looking. Both of them love to eat tomatoes, tobacco, peppers, all of those things. So I think for next year, we're definitely going to move the tomatoes into big pots and till up the garden very well. And also some websites recommended planting basil and marigolds around the base of the tomatoes, which we like both of those things that might keep some of the hornworms from getting back in again. I continue to look for it every day. And as soon as I find it, I'll whip it out off into the yard when I spread the bird seed and, and let the birds enjoy a nice fresh caterpillar, which is just nature, I guess. I feel a little bad, but not really, because he's eating my tomatoes. We have an heirloom tomato plant that has very large tomatoes on it, and so they take a long time to become ripe. And I've been waiting patiently while these huge green tomatoes grow and grow and grow and then slowly turn pink and he is a wizard at finding when they've just gotten a little bit red on it so i think i am going to pull the green tomatoes in i spoke with a woman when we lived in texas and she was from ukraine and she used to talk about a thing she'd made with green tomatoes and you pack them in a jar with different things and uh, i would like to look that up although if anyone knows the ukrainian green tomato in a jar preparation. I'd love to try that because I don't think I'm going to trust letting the tomatoes stay out there to get ripe. Even though we do have enough sun here, they would be able to, I think they'd be nibbled. And I want to eat them, not feed them to the caterpillar because I'm selfish that way. It is an interesting thing. Growing up in Montana, the season really wasn't long enough for tomatoes to get ripe on the vine. And so we always pulled them in when they were green and they stayed spread out all over the basement floor for the next couple months and that was how we ate them so it wasn't until i moved to warmer places that i had the experience of a nice warm ripe tomato you know hot from the sun fresh off the vine and that's something that is a real great pleasure in life so that's my world around not a lot of facts about the tomato hornworm because i don't want them to be here <laughs> but if you have any good tips i'd love to hear it they are really beautiful caterpillars and if I could just donate them one tomato a week for them and the rest for me I think we could live in harmony sadly that may not work <laughs> but at least if it goes it can go to feed a bird so I think that's the best I can hope for moving to questions last week the question was your favorite produce from this time of year and all of the comments made me hungry so thank you for that there's just so much to appreciate this year, the question is in a totally different direction. Have you ever painted a file cabinet? I have two big metal file cabinets that live, they're just regular office file cabinets, live in the closet in the guest room where I store a lot of my stitching things. And I'd like to move them out of the closet so I can use the closet a little bit more efficiently for storage, but they're just beige and I wanted to paint them. I've painted a lot of furniture in my life, but I've never painted a metal office filing cabinet. So. If you have done that or you have any tips, I would really love to hear it because I think in a few weeks I want to take on that project and get things a little more organized. When we have an event like Expo, it's everywhere and it's tough on the boys because I've taken every table and every surface with boxes and things spread out. So I want to 
do a little bit better about organizing some of the storage and use every inch of storage that I have available. So if you know about filing cabinet painting, I would like to hear about it. Best thing this video, Rye is getting better very slowly. So thank you, all of you who wished her well. She did manage to get all of her stitches out one at a time, but the vet's keeping an eye and she is finally now starting to actually heal up. She's like a, a little kid at that age where they're constantly scraping their knees. And I used to get those pants with extra reinforcement from my son at that stage because he needed like armor inside the knees of his pants. They were just always tearing through. And I think she's a little bit the same, doesn't always watch her limbs as she's romping around in the yard. So she gets cuts and scrapes, but that one is definitely one that's taken a lot longer to heal. So she is doing better. Giveaway last time was this lovely. I think it's called Water Spirit Kit from Owl Forest Embroidery. It looks like a big sturgeon there. We can get that. Lots of comments with fish. And the lucky winner is Deb Hargrave. Thank you, Deb. Send me an email or a message with your address and we'll get that out to you. This week for giveaway, I have a fun piece of fabric from Barbara Creations. And this is called Woodland Halloween. One of the things I love about this is, I think you can tell right now on my screen at least, it looks like it's showing properly. The, the dark color is really a mix of very inky blues and greens. And then you've got these lovely oranges in here. And depending on the size of what you were stitching, you could obviously choose a very dark section or a very orangey mottled section. So there's lots of good opportunity there. I really love this fabric and I have a piece for myself. And I really want, it's one of those that it doesn't apply itself to every design, but if you found the right thing, and fortunately we've just had an expo with lots of fun seasonal designs, it would be lots of fun to stitch up on such a beautiful piece of fabric. So if you're interested, this is a piece of 40 count. So I'm sorry for those of you who don't stitch 40, but here it is for those of you who are willing to give it a go. Use the word Halloween in your comments. We'll pick one for next time and you can get the lovely fabric to hoard in your stash until you find just the right thing to stitch on it. Which, speaking of next video, it's going to be in three weeks. In two weeks from today, I will be in Portland at the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. I'm so looking forward to seeing a number of you there, either in person or on Zoom. It'll be a fun event. Janine always does a great event with the Acorns and Threads staff. And Steph's gonna be there, Beth Twist is gonna be there. It's a good time. So I will not be doing a video two weeks from today, but I'll do one in three weeks with the full update and lots of fun things to share at that point. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I'm very casual today because I'm going to go get my COVID and flu shots right after this. So prepare to just take it easy for the rest of the weekend, but I hope you enjoy whatever you have planned. We do have a little bit longer than usual puppy video at the end since we have three weeks of puppy pictures. Mosey did a little extra romping around the yard for the camera this time. So it's nice to see her really coming out of her shell and bouncing and just having fun being a dog. Rye has always done that. So that's nice to see Mosey doing it as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I missed you last weekend, but I will look forward to seeing you again in three weeks. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.